Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for joining us, Team Lynch Spirit of Adventure. Want to do a walkthrough and kind of a review of Bertha here, my 2020, technically a Coachman Beyond van um, that we have converted by um, Coachman RV Company. Um, they make a lot of stuff. They're actually owned by Forest River. Um, and the reason why I ended up not building a van and instead going with somebody who's already kind of built it out is really the cost for what you get. Um, I got much more high quality stuff in this build than what I could purchase on my own and I didn't have to worry about figuring out how to make it all work together. Um, so I did this. This is technically um, a 2020 um, Coach and Beyond on a 2019 Ford Transit 350 HD body. So coming around to the front of the van, um, you can see the 2020 and the 2019, um, there's not a lot of big differences in the front. The headlights are shaped a little different, but what you get with all of them is this little step here. You'll notice the sprinters also have this because the windshield is pretty high, so you need it to step up I'm a pretty big guy, um, just over 200 pounds. This holds my weight for you to kind of scrub your windshield and all that good stuff. There's a camera in the windshield as well for the lane departure uh, technology that comes with this fan, which really helps out if you've never driven dually before or any kind of a heavy duty vehicle like this. Going around to the side, normally you'd actually have some Coachman Beyond graphics, some things like this. I actually took off all the badging um, for the vehicle. Um, just makes it a little bit easier for stealth camping. I know I still have some stickers and stuff on it, but um, this van is really, really good for stealth camping or just boondocking. Um, and it makes it a little easier when you take off all your RV badging. So you can see here, um, it looks like a passenger van on the outside. Do you have the high top? Um, only two of the windows here, so we have actually three banks of windows. Two of them vent, and the way these vent is actually just straight out this way so it's not the kind that if you're the rain or something like that it would kind of shed the rain off you will get rain inside the van if you vent these but these vent about two inches um, and they only go about two inches they're not adjustable so it's either venting or non-venting which is okay on the sides here do you have a spray port which is kind of a quick disconnect um, cold water so you can't adjust the hot or cold it's just straight cold water from the fresh water on the van but it is a high pressure hose that you can use to hose off your dogs if you're outside doing stuff your boots your hiking things like that there's two solar panels on top of this van each rated at 100 watts each so I have 200 watts of solar on top and a flexible panel that actually molds itself to the top of the van so you don't actually see a big bulky uh, solar panel but I also have 20 amps rated uh, for solar on the side with go power which is also the manufacturer of the charge controller so i can actually unplug this put in some panels go on the ground and actually double triple what i get up top you have your 30 amp power service here as well as city water fresh water connection black tank flush and then the cable which i've never used this really um, i actually have fire tv inside the the van inside bertha so i actually don't need to hook up that way um, which is really cool um, the other side too on this side which is the non-sliding door of the van you have your propane hookups of course all of your your warnings here on the propane so your main cutoff valve your fill and everything um, and then also a quick disconnect a quick connect whatever you want to call that um, and that's for basically hooking up a grill to your van so if I wanted to have an outside grill and not cook on the inside or I want to have a fire pit or anything like that especially with the fire restrictions going on right now in the mountains if you have a self-contained fire usually those are okay and you actually plug it right up here to the van to the propane and run all that stuff from the I want to say it's a 10 pound propane uh, tank 10 pound or I forget it's like 41 pounds or nine pounds or something the different various ways you kind of calculate propane volume you also have your sewer hose um, storage here. The thing about this Coachman Beyond when it comes to the sewer hose storage is that this can hold a five foot hose, which is not a lot if you get a really good quality hose. I've, I think it's 28 inches long, this tube, which if you know anything about RV sewer hoses, which if you're watching this video, you probably don't, but it's not long enough to actually have a high quality hose in there that's 10 feet. So I actually have a five foot in there and I have a five foot extension in the back of the van that I'll show you here soon um, to use. So the other thing to note about sewer hose connections, sewer hose and all that stuff is that on this van, the Coachman Beyond, you actually have a gray water and you have black water. 
Now, this specific floor plan is called a 22RB, RB meaning rear bath. The other two floor plans, the C and the D, for this type of van build out, actually have their bathrooms right here. They have their showers, toilet, and everything right here. So this being labeled the sewer outlet or black water actually is accurate. But because this is a one-off floor plan that they actually don't make a lot of the RVs, the rear bath, this is actually backwards. And it was kind of a funny thing for me to figure out, pretty stinky to figure out by, on your own. But this is actually the gray water on, on this particular floor plan. And the black water, Blackwater is actually down here, which is normally the gray water. And this is the, actually the, the generator um, exhaust here as well, next to the black water vent. Coming around to the back of the van, we actually got this um, bike carrier or bike bike rack. Um, it's bolted into the back of the van. The way you use this is you take these little knobs off, lowers down. These arms kind of fold out as well, um, brace themselves on here. And you put two bikes. Here's a catch with RVs in general, or van build outs by RV companies, or maybe van build outs by van build out companies, is that a lot of this stuff is not standard. So you won't find this rack in an REI. Um, if you look at Winnebago RVs or other van build outs, outside van that have this rack, it's not the same rack. Um, most of these companies have this stuff custom made for them by um, metal companies and stuff like that. So this is no different. So this is actually in the sheet metal of the van and it holds 100 pounds, but I've also learned that a lot of Ford Transit owners that have this actually have had it rip out whenever you put 100 pounds on it with the, the jostling of the van in the back. So this is about an $800 option on this van and one that I wish that I had not done because I'm actually gonna take this off and just use it at a hitch uh, bike rack as well. Speaking of hitch bike racks, they actually have a class five hitch here, can pull up to 5,000 pounds with that. Of course, you wanna stay within your total gross vehicle weight capacity. Um, with this, you have all your hookups for tra trailering, three pin, seven pin, all that stuff. Um, I do have this registered in New Mexico. I'm probably gonna um, blank out my my um, license plate numbers. Did that for tax reasons. On this van, there is a lot of things that and I kind of mentioned at the beginning of the video. There's a lot of upgrades to the van that if I had to purchase stuff on my own, it would have been a lot of money to purchase stuff and then also to install it. One of those things is also Sumo Springs, which on a big heavy duty van like this, that's gonna have a lot of stuff built out on it. Even in the ones that people build out on their own, they were generally want or wish or get an upgraded suspension to carry the weight, have a better ride. This actually has it. Sumo Springs are some of the best suspension upgrades you can get for these vans. And it was already upgraded and installed. So just buying that would have been one thing, but to buy a brand new Ford Transit van and just rip out the suspension and put a new one in, I don't know if I could bear my bear with myself to do it so i'm glad they did it already but again ford um 350 hd now the way that these hinges work is you actually have a a lock and an unlock so if you unlock it you can actually have this go all the way out just get itself on the outside of the van there there's actually a magnet back here that holds the door flat so if you're looking just right here those are actually magnets and they actually come together and lock, the, lock themselves together to hold the door in place. All right, it just locks back in place, this little arm. I don't have to hit lock. It automatically does it when I close the door. Really cool. So like I was saying earlier, you kind of have some cubbies here on the back. Um, I keep a lot of the kind of tank water drainage tools here. So I keep my, um, my home and garden gloves um, that don't need to be thrown out because I'm just doing like gray water. And then I have these disposable vinyl gloves when I'm actually doing the black tank, the poo-poo water as I call it sometimes. Um, came in really handy when I had to figure out that my black tank was actually at the back. Thought I was draining my gray tank. I was like, how come there's no gray coming out? The gray's full and it was just, it was trickling out something. This wasn't gray water, it was black water. Totally nasty. Um, I do keep an elbow back here, a clear elbow from hooking up or dumping the tanks at a campsite. And I keep another hose. I actually have the Thetford. I forget what this is called, but it's a, a very heavy duty um, hose. If you step on it, it won't break or puncture. Um, but it's not that much thicker than like what a cheap hose would be, like a Walmart, Walmart version would be or something you get on Amazon. Compressing it down, it compresses to about 27 inches, which is why I can fit 
the, um, the other five foot version of this in that little hose thing. But um, in reality, the minimum hose size you need that I found out, because I'm not an RV or van life, it's my first van life thing, is you need about 10 feet to work in most locations. So two five foot extensions work, but it would have been really nice to be able to put a 10 foot in that little tube that was out back. Um, fresh water hose goes back here I keep this is that quick disconnect for that spray spray and wash type of thing on the outside some other disconnects um, do have velcro window shades they're out here and when those fold up they actually go in these cubbies up here um, but like I stated this is a rear bath so the rear bath is back here you do have a hidden door and I'll show all that when, I, when we go inside um, but really one good thing about this van, um, and there's a Winnebago model, the Travato, um, I think it's like the K, that has a, a bath in the back, but you get a really, really big wardrobe, it's relatively speaking, for, for a van built out like this. So you have a kind of a closet up top, um, and you have the three drawers here, which are pretty, pretty big, and you have locks with the drawers, um, and then you have your vanity that flips up, but I'll go into that in detail once we move inside. We do have speakers here in the doors, ties into the stereo system on the inside with more stereos on the inside as well. We also, oh, one thing I forgot, we also have shade here. So even though this is a rear bath model, um, you can still have this open, have the breeze coming through, and have this for the bugs to not get in as well, just like you see in all the van life stuff out there. Okay, coming over to the right side of the van, um, we do have 110 outlets out here on the outside um, and let me reset they do get triggered out here I've noticed um, but those are those I have a Truma heater on here so it actually is hot water and a furnace um, and it does run off of propane the Truma heater and um, the fan runs off the battery through the inverter uh, you have the that's the exhaust on this side for the, um, the EcoBoost uh, 3.5 liter V6 that's in this van. This van does produce 400 foot-pounds of torque at just 2,500 RPM and it's a gas engine. So it's actually more power than the Sprinter diesel. A lot more power than the gasoline engine Sprinter as well. So coming on inside into the, the interior of the van, sliding this door open, just like on the other side, there's two venting windows, one in the front, one in the back. We do have this carefree awning. I wanna say it's a 14 by nine foot awning. It does have LED lights on it and it does have wind protection. Um, it, it is freestanding, so you don't have to put any kind of legs down and when the wind's too much, it retracts itself automatically. We also have a hookup here for another 12 volt TV. We could put here if we wanted to with cable hookups if you wanted that. We do have a porch light that can either be solid on um, or a um, motion detector. And the porch light is also here, which you can't really see, which lights up this area. When you do have that on, you also have some blue LEDs underneath the, the, um, the step there, which kind of makes it look like a spaceship. It's actually pretty cool. So let's come on in. Okay, so coming into the van here, um, it's actually pretty cool. Um, when you first walk in, you actually have everything in this small cabinet here for pretty much everything pretty much everything that you would use. So have gray tank heater on this particular floor plan for this particular van build out. And they're all different. That's one thing you'll learn about any van build out, any RV or anything. Um, they're all different. But for this particular one, the only tank I have on the outside of the van where it wouldn't be climate controlled by the furnace or the AC is the gray um, tank. It's actually right below me right here on the, on the left side of the van. So there's actually a tank heater for that. The van does have a Wi-Fi Ranger, and so we have that. Um, our battery disconnect store, our Truma, which, um, as I stated before, um, a furnace, hot water heater. Um, you set the settings just like that, head at the 54, off, eco, hot, hot, or boost, and that's for your hot water. We also have an option on this particular Truma model. You have electric only, electric one, so that's high or low. You have a mix, high or low. And that mix is mixing with the propane um, with the gas. So right now I have it set to electric because I'm not boondocking or anything like that. So um, I always have it set to electric. I only use the propane when I'm out boondocking to save battery, to not have to run the engine, all that good stuff as well. Um, up here, um, have my total kind of control for everything. So this does have a generator on it. 
and you do have an automatic generator start. You have all these different kind of ways that you trigger that, either with low voltage on the battery or if the rooftop AC comes on. Um, you have quiet time, all that start and stop. Really, really great stuff. The generator to start, how many times do you want to try to restart it? Um, and the thing, this trigger with the low volts being either low volts or the HVAC load, the reason why that is so important is in most cases with most vans or RV, if you have a rooftop AC, which this one does, because we're in Utah, a lot of Utah is desert. Some of it's mountains, but a lot of it's desert. Um, and we also want to be able to go to the desert and do things like that. With most rooftop ACs like this van has, they usually run off of AC power, not DC power. And so usually you can't even run the, the rooftop AC unless you're hooked up to shore power or unless you have the generator going. Not even the engine produces AC power um, unless you're gonna run your, your, um, your inverter. Um, if you're gonna run that, then the AC runs off of, off of that. But point is, is that most of the time your generator would have to kick on in order to make the AC work. For this specific van, this again is another advantage that I had buying this through a company that makes a lot of them per year for the economies of scale, is I actually got what's known as a Pro Air rooftop AC that runs off of DC electricity instead of AC. What that means is I don't have to run my inverter, I don't have to run a generator, I don't have to run anything to make the AC work. It just runs off the battery if I want to. And it can run off the engine power, um, and the engine actually produces enough generator or electricity to actually charge your batteries enough to run the AC and not deplete the, the, uh, the batteries themselves, which is kind of unheard of for a rooftop AC, and it does 20,000 BTUs of cooling power. So I have the generator, I can still do the AGS start, I can actually have it be a backup to make sure my batteries don't get drained too much by the AC, but I can just run the AC off the batteries as well. I don't have lithium on here, which if I had lithium, I could probably run the, bat the AC for a couple days, but with the AGM batteries I do have, I'm good for about three to four hours of full blast AC before the batteries will shut themselves off and protect themselves, or the generator would kick on. Okay, so looking at the rest of the van, so in this particular floor plan, again, I have the 22RB, there's a 22C, which has the traditional couch that you see most of the time in the back that kind of lays down in these vans and turns into a bed, or the 22D Delta, which has two twin beds that then come together, um, or kind of two twin couches, or really short couches that come together into a bed you sleep in sideways. Uh, this is the RB, the rear bath. Um, so this is the only one that doesn't have the shower and toilet and everything, the wet bath here. Instead, you have the galley. And this particular model, I ended up upgrading, and instead of getting a double propane um, range, I ended up getting induction range, um, which means that this this in the microwave, which is back here on the other side of the galley, those are the only two things that run off of the AC and require the inverter in this galley. Um, that also means that the Truma furnace that heats the hot water and also heats the van is only using propane for that and not using propane to cook if I ever cooked in here. So it really does save a lot on the propane as well. Um, on this van is it also, it's an upgraded generator, which runs off of gas. It runs off the same gas as the engine here. and actually has a cutoff that I think when I'm down either to a gallon or a half gallon of fuel, it won't run the generator anymore. So that way you can start at the van and go get more gas. Um, so the propane on here, I've not filled it up yet. Um, topped it off for anything and I've done four or five trips where I've boondocked, heated the van in the mountains in Colorado and Utah and it still shows us full. It is barely using the propane on this thing to heat this van and heat the hot water which is pretty excellent. And again when I'm plugged up, have shore power, I use electricity instead of the propane to conserve it as well. Um, you do have sink here, this kind of coming out, gives you extra counter space. I like to throw it in here whenever I'm not using it. Um, put the dog bowls and other stuff you don't want kind of running around um, in there. You have a really cool handy um, flip out drawer for your sponges and other things. I put my soap in there because again, things you don't want to have uh, jostling around. You have a protected drawer here. The clip on it to keep it closed for the trash. There's also some storage behind the trash. Um, this is where for now I'm keeping um, an extra hose that collapses for the black tank clean out. Also, get this out of the way. I have two more drawers below. Not really keeping a ton of stuff in, in there right now. Fridge. Here in this fridge, you actually have this little freezer option. You do have an ice cube tray 
and kind of a salad tray or whatever produce tray you want to have down there. Um, it does keep it things pretty cool. Actually, if you keep it too cold on the settings, it'll freeze everything in there. It runs off of DC. It is not a um, a three part or a three um, type of um, refrigerator. It runs off of AC, DC, and propane. This is strictly DC, which I love. It's a compressor um, cooler. Um, does a really really great job. And again, on the RB, you get this one on the C and the D floor plans for this particular van. You get a slightly bigger. Um, refrigerator and it's further in the back. Moving over to this side, again you have the microwave and please forgive water spots or anything. I'm actually using the van. I actually live in this thing when I'm on the road. I'm on the road quite a bit. Um, turntable microwave. It is not a convection oven. Um, so a true microwave. Have snacks and things down in these drawers. As you can see. Now one thing about this van, or I guess any van or RV that I didn't realize was kind of a, a thing, was that things break all the time. Like, it's like a badge of honor for you to take the stuff out, and I bought this brand new. So yeah, things have broken. So, so on this drawer, just messing around with it, pulling it out like this, there's a little thing that receives the hook to keep the drawer closed, and I actually got compacted, and since it's plastic, it actually broke. So that's not working anymore, um, but luckily for me, um, I'm on a Facebook group um, that of people that own these types of vans, and that part can be found on Amazon, so I have a whole bag of them now, and I'm going to start replacing them because it seems like that's going to be a common thing. Um, moving further into the back of the van, we have cabinets that go all the way up here. Um, these are actually really cool. Some of them connect, like so this cabinet doesn't have a divider in it. There's a divider here. You get to these two cabinets and open up, there's no divider. So you can either have just space in one cabinet or have something much larger in there. There's mood lighting LED strips that are in here that light up this entire cabinet. Also behind this panel here, you end up having LED lights back here. We put down mood lighting down here. It's really nice. Actually, whenever I'm boondocking, if I'm in like in a parking lot or something like that, I usually put into the mood lighting up here and I put the rear cabinet lights just to put like some ambient light in here. And I won't actually use the overhead lights. Um, actually makes it pretty chill, um, especially let's say if you're in Colorado and you're partaking in like, you know, devil's lettuce and other stuff, it actually makes it pretty nice um, and it keeps it private. Same thing on both sides. The only thing that's different about the cabinets um, driver side versus the passenger side is that the driver side has the control panel up there. And this very, very last one has the onboard kind of entertainment system and a bunch of manuals and stuff up here. So that actually controls the 24 inch LED TV that also runs off of DC. Um, so you can play DVDs. Um, you could actually hook your phone up to this or any other player um, via Bluetooth. Um, you do control things through the HDMI, the ARC. So if you, in theory, if you turn up the TV on this, it's actually gonna play all through these speakers. There's also speakers outside the van as well that play outside if you're chilling out outside and you wanna hear music. So it's actually pretty nice and doesn't really take up that much room in there. Um, there's a, we have our fantastic fan, which the thing I don't like about this fan, I mean, there's a good thing about the fan is that it's automatic. You have a remote. I can just open up the fan and vent it, or I can also do it manual on what speed I want the fan on, or put it on a thermostat. If I want to keep it 72 in here, it's going to run higher or lower to keep us like that. Um, it has a rain sensor and closes up, you know, if there's even a drop of rain or anything, that's been really great. But the cover itself is see-through. And because it's see-through, when you're sleeping in the van, um, the sunlight tends to wake you up, which generally I, I notice I wake up a lot earlier when I'm sleeping in the van or just camping in general. But it would be really nice to be able to block that out. And so it looks like I'm going to have to just get some fabric and just, you know, put some Velcro or something to, to kind of put that up there, which a lot of people do um, on, on those fans if they don't already come with a cover. Um, have the windows in the back um, as well as behind the galley there, the same type of windows. Um, the ones here that do not vent have this really cool kind of shade but again the thing about rvs if you're not an rv or a van person um for the the components to get built in here is that they're meant to be super light and so this right here if you see here it kind of it kind of pokes and so you kind of have to push that in there because it gets kind of caught up on itself and you have to make sure it folds right because it is kind of a paper shade it's a blackout shade so this has a blackout shade, which is really nice. The ones in the back that actually vent have this dual purpose shade. So you have a plastic clip here, you pull that up, 
you can vent the window, you just pinch that there, push that out, close this back to make it closed. And if you have it open, you can actually pull this up and have a bug screen, put that together, or any, any iteration you want to kind of let in um, cool air from the outside. Um, you have reading lights here um, that also have uh, five, um, five volt, two amp fast charging USB ports on here. Um, you, you do have charging station as well, the USB ports, 12 volts, um, as well as AC outlets throughout the coach as well. They call it a coach, I call it a van. The people that sold it to me call it a coach. But it is, even the vans that you build yourself, they're technically coaches, I guess, they're still RVs. You're still gonna order all the components from the same places, and you're gonna have to kind of figure it out. Um, which, man, I just really love that someone else figured this out for me. So I wouldn't have to be pissed off with stuff like this. Let me show you. So kind of like this in the galley is what I mean with having to figure it out and having other people figure it out is that this would drive me nuts. So you see how this kind of sags down right here? There's nothing wrong with this window shade. It works fine. Um, it is kind of weird that like the entire galley takes up um, this thing. So I have to kind of like put my fingers in the back to pull up the window if I want to cook here or, or to even vent the window or anything like that. But this right here dipping, I've tried to lift it back up and kind of mess with it. And I've noticed that like, it's weird. It doesn't want to go up. It's, it's fixed here. It's not kind of fixed there. So, but it's staying in place. So maybe just leave it alone. Um, there's been other people that own these kind of shades in their vans as well that have done things to kind of fix that but it's purely cosmetic. And some of them look like that, some of them don't. Some of them, they have the corner pieces, you know, kind of flush on there. Some have little gaps. So just know that if you build your own van, get a van built, you buy a van, there's gonna be these little things in here and they will drive you friggin' nuts if you let them, but don't. It's just the way the stuff is. So coming further back into the van, um, we have another control panel back here, um, just like the one on the front, um, has all the stuff with the gray tanks black tanks, a um, couple of different things it doesn't have back here. Um, actually, I think it has pretty much everything just in a bigger screen. So you can do your automatic generator settings. One thing I didn't show there was the, the tank capacity. So we're at 45% black, which I don't know if that's accurate or not. Maybe it is. Um, we're also kind of on a little bit of a, of a slant towards that side where you dump it. Your house, your chassis batteries, inside temperature of the van, and then, um, what you want the temperature to be. So right now, that this would be for the AC. The furnace is actually set you know, on the other one. Um, you have your light settings, your porch, your awning lights. And you could also, if I wanted to turn all these lights on and have that as a master, I could set it like that. Um, I can also have it to where just the bathroom and just the main ceilings are the masters and not all the lights are masters. So that's pretty cool. Um, again, this is the AC setting. You only have cool and you have a fan to auto or manual. Um, I've noticed on this Pro Air DC powered um, AC, it's better to have the fan on 100% all the time because the way that this particular um, AC works, it can serve electricity. If it knows you're trying to get it to 71 and it's, let's say at 75 and it starts getting closer and closer to 71, it actually start to turn itself down to start conserving electricity. But what I've noticed is it never fully gets to that 71 because it does that. It's always like at 72, 73 and always kind of struggling to keep it there. So I just keep it on 100%, let it just blast the air as hard as possible and it seems to work great. Um, and you have all these other little settings as well, mobile apps and stuff like that, auto dimming, cleaning mode, of course the floor plan that we have, screen brightness, all real cool. So the big thing or the little thing, big thing or the little thing, I don't know how people want to call it, but the bathroom. Um, so the reason why I got the rear bath was because I, I hate wet baths in general. They seem to be very, very small for me. And generally you're kind of straddling the toilet while you're standing up to take a shower. Um, I noticed in these rear baths, if you look, I'm standing in the shower pan itself. So this is fully where you'd stand to take a shower. There's plenty of room. Um, you're not straddling a toilet or a sink or anything like that. If you actually come and take a look in here, the way this is set up, you get the, the sink actually folds up. You have, just like in a regular wet bath, you have your shower head that comes out from the sink like that. And 
that back in. You have your medicine cabinet, which snaps in up there. Um, don't want to open it. Well, maybe, let's see. Sometimes things, yeah. So I have some Pampers wipes in there. And of course the curtain, the way the curtain kind of comes out here, it ties up to the back. You have some, some hooks here for hanging some towels. But this curtain actually comes along this rack, this rail, and it comes all the way around and basically stays inside this tub right here to where you don't get any water out. Now, with all wet baths, you get a little bit of leakage sometimes. Um, from what I understand, the vans that typically have their showers near the front of the van usually have to have them much smaller or narrower, so you have a lot less room. You're kind of, and I've seen a guy of my size, basically his stomach was right at the sink. The, his knees were on the toilet. Um, or hitting the toilet or kind of strapped around it and hardly had any elbow room. If I understand, the water does get out because you, you inadvertently push the curtain outside of the shower pan. And so you end up flooding a little bit the front of your van. I have never had that problem yet in this van. And like I said, I have tons of space in here for uh, my clothes and things like that. And so generally speaking, whenever I'm in here, if there's other people in here, you have this door here that you just pull. just closed like that it's a soft material so even though it seems like a pocket door it's not it's just going right here into this little tube here um, really really nice setup for that you have AC vents that blow back here as well if you have this open to keep it cool um, the furnace is actually under this bunk um, that's on the passenger side and the, the furnace vents are below that and blow back into here as well so the back of this is actually heated and cooled very well if you're back here and I know what you may be thinking. The fantastic fan was up there and the galley's up there. So that helps with those galley smells. And in most times, the galley's right across from the toilet and the shower in most of these vans. So that fantastic fan would vent all of it. What happens to the doo-doo smells that are back here when you're using this or showering with the steam? And actually, that's what's really cool. So if you look here, there's actually a, a max fan that's back here that you hit this little button, you push this up and it actually vents and then there's a little button that you hit and there's a fan that comes on and just sucks everything out of here. You turn it off, you pull this back down, it's watertight. Um, and again, this 22 RB floor plan is the only one that has a vent in the shower like that. So the other two vans I've seen, even the sprinter options I've seen that have the shower near the front, they use the main um, fan in the van that rhymes, um, to suck out all the moisture, humidity, and the poopy smells, whereas the RB, the rear bath ones, have their own dedicated um, exhaust fan, which I really, really love about this as well. So another thing, uh, another thing about this van, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's two other floor plans, a C and a D. Uh, the C having the couch in the back, and then a D having kind of beds like this, two couches, but they're much shorter and they're kind of in the, they're further in the back, obviously, because there's no bathroom. And they fold out, there's some platforms that come out here and they fold out and become one big bed. You kind of sleep on sideways. This doesn't do that. Um, the reason that I like this instead of that D floor plan where the beds come together is one, the cushions on this were so much more thick, twice as thick as the D was. So, which I really, really like because it makes it a lot more comfortable. The other thing is I also get to take people along with me and I don't have the awkwardness of having to put the beds together and let's say it's a person who likes a personal space, um, tell them, all right, I hope you like sharing a blanket. So don't do that. Now, what I what I am going to do um, with this is that underneath these beds there are platforms, um, you know, where they have, where I have, um, I think by freshwater tanks on this one and the furnace is under this one and there's a little bit of space, not really for storage, but you could put things in there. Um, I am going to replace that piece of wood that makes those platforms for the bed and create um, a system where I can extend them out to create a space in the middle that I can put filler cushions in and create one big space for really when I have the dogs and stuff like that. Um, they love to sleep with me and on one twin bed it's not enough and they don't seem to put together the fact that you're only like a foot away from me in this other bed but they still get kind of crazy and like jump onto my bed and then I end up getting knocked off my own twin bed in my own van. It's crazy. So yeah, so there's that. Um, the other thing is that the furnaces are underneath here as well. So sleeping in a van, you have to know it's drafty. So front of the van, um, when it's below freezing, is much colder than it is in the back of the van. And if you're sleeping on this bed, 
because the furnace vents are on this side, they tend to blow over to you. And if your blanket happens to fall over the side, or, or let's say a person is sleeping on this side and their blanket falls over the side, you'll immediately notice that the heat is kind of gone and you'll notice that their blanket seems like it's catching on fire because it's so hot <laughs> and so it scares you a little bit. Um, there's that um, little thing about the van. Another little thing about the van is the door is very heavy. Um, so to close it, you feel like you do have to kind of slam it, um, stuff like that. Not a big deal, but almost every passenger I brought into the van always has issues closing the door. Um, and I think because they're worried they're going to break the van or something because they don't realize this is a Ford Transit heavy-duty cargo van. You can't break it. Um, other than that, the van's held up really nice. I've taken it off-road, regular kind of forest service road type of stuff, nothing too crazy. Um, because of the 400 foot-pounds of torque, more than the Sprinter diesel, more than a Sprinter, Sprinter gas engine, um, I can go up mountain passes. I'm passing other vans, RVs, trucks, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. And it's it's like it's not even sweating. This van has so much torque and power. It's really kind of amazing. Um, all in all, MSRP on this, about $146,000. I could tell you right now, as a person who's never bought a ready-made RV van or anything like this, do not believe the sticker price on the vans. Apparently, they can't advertise. Most RV dealers can't advertise their sale prices or what their actual price is. They have to put the MSRP on, on their websites. Um, and they're always way more than what you're going to buy the van or the RV, whatever you're going to buy for. So just know that as well. 146 on this. I'd be surprised if you actually pay that. Um, you're probably going to paying closer to about 100K um, for this brand new, less if you get one used. Um, know if you want to get this used. This started being uh, this started being called the um, Coachman Beyond in 2019, I want to say. So 2019, 2020 models. Um, 2017 and 2018, I want to say, was called the, the CrossFit. So similar van. It's on a Transit. Um, the CrossFits are a little different. They don't have the EcoBoost twin turbo engines. They don't have the, the higher end, kind of more powerful engine. Um, and they're a little bit older. Some of their battery systems, the solar is a little bit different. Um, and what I've noticed as well, no matter what you get, if you get a 2021 Beyond instead of this 2020, your setup might be slightly different as well, which is okay. Um, just make sure you read all the manuals for all the individual components that you get. So that's my walkthrough, kind of review of the van so far. Um, the things that are kind of, ugh, they'll drive you nuts. The things that are great about the van. Um, if you like it, like, subscribe, comment. If you have any questions, shoot me a direct message, email, or put it in the comments as well, and I'll make sure I answer all the questions as soon as I can. Till next time, see you later.